All right, folks, and it's now time for the Malsberg panel. And joining us uh, once again is uh, Peter Morisi, of course, economist at the University of uh, Maryland. Good to have Peter back. And joining us for the first time, uh, if you were watching America's Forum uh, up until uh, about 20 minutes ago, you know him as the co-host of America's Forum, former congressman, of course, J.D. Hayworth. Hello, sir, and hello, gentlemen. Steve. It, Hi, it, how are you? It seems to be, what, uh, 15, 20 minutes ago we last got together, and Peter, it's, it's <laughs> great to be alone with you, sir, so this ought to be a great discussion. All right, well, I look forward to it, and let's start. We had a guest He's on... He's a politician. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> and you're an economist. Like true yeah, you're an economist, Peter. Yeah, so I'm there a you have scientist. it, man. I'm about, I'm about to depress you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let let let's start with uh, first of all, uh, before we get to the previous guest and and the dangers of uh, of of our power grid going down and the chaos that would uh, that would ensue. I want to talk about what the president did today. Um, basically, uh, through his capacity, uh, he's now ordering overtime for millions of more workers around the country, uh, so-called white-collar supervisors who ordinarily you know, put in more than 40 hours, but up till now, uh, or heretofore, have uh, not been uh, uh, qualified for uh, overtime pay. And now, now he's putting that expense and that burden on uh, businesses once again. Peter? Well, I don't mind him raising it in line with inflation, but going beyond that is too much. You know, we've always had this rule. It was even adjusted by President Bush. You know, for people that make uh, very low salaries, making them work more than 40 hours a week essentially pushes them under minimum wage. So I wouldn't want to see that happen if we're going to have it, if we're going to have a minimum wage. But I don't want him, you know, boosting it up to fifty thousand dollars a year or something at the cap. Uh, and, and J.D., again, you know, I, uh, Peter makes a good point. You don't want someone being abused. Certainly not. Uh, and, and where their salary becomes less than minimum wage. But it, it, to me, it's just the way he, you know, he goes about it. There's no discussion. He's just doing it. <laughs> well, again, understand, now, understand that it's an executive order and where he can act unilaterally in keeping with what prior chief executives have done, he's on fairly solid footing. In, in fact, Steve, in a weird way, there may be a ray of hope in this. It, and now, the key is what Peter said. If it's moderated, when you take a look at what, the president did in terms of ordering new federal contractors to take the minimum wage up to ten dollars ten cents an hour if you were doing that to mom and pop stores the, the the effect would be horrible but i see in this not so much the dismal science of economics but the optics of political science the president still trying to say look i've got my pen i've got my phone i've got executive orders in that way i can I can move the agenda forward, but this almost seems to be a kind of Clinton-esque moderate move on his part. I don't want to suggest so much uh, triangulation, but the one thing we agree we don't want is a strangulation on jobs and, uh, and uh, too much too soon in an inappropriate way. Right, Peter. I mean, uh, I don't know who said it, but it was said earlier today that you can't have a minimum wage, or you don't have a you don't have overtime if you don't have a job. Uh, and if this you know if this does force some uh, some people to lay people off, uh, then it's it's going to you know be uh, it's a self defeating uh, process. Well, absolutely, it would be a, a self defeating process. I, I think that we have to recognize that economists like myself, conservative politicians, would prefer there be no minimum wage. I view the minimum wage as a fact of life, however, because society you know, seems to broadly support it. In the NBC poll that we just had, the Wall Street Journal poll, I mean, it, it showed Mr. Obama's approval ratings about as low as they've ever been. Or 41%, but yet there was yeah. support, support for raising the minimum wage among a majority of Americans. So if I'm going to be relevant in the context of that debate, then let me talk about what's reasonable in that context. And what's reasonable in that context, for example, is to raise the minimum wage from, say, seven and a quarter to eight dollars or eight dollars and twenty five cents. That would be in line with inflation since it was last adjusted. And in turn, to adjust this in line with inflation for when it was last adjusted by President Bush, which was about 10 years ago. Uh, of course, the congressman said, you know, consistent with past executive action. This seems to be rare. Our president is operating in lots of places where there is no precedent and agreement on the basis of past executive action. He seems to think he can play football with 13 men if it suits him. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get any and disagreement maybe brass here. Knuckles and a submachine gun. Whoa. 
Well, I Peter, think. you you won't get any disagreement there, but but I think it is important again the politics of this. Now, as I understand it, Steve, the discharge petition in the House of Representatives reached a majority, 218. If that, in fact, is the case, that means that a minimum wage increase must move through. And it'll be interesting to see whether it happens in the House in drafting this. I don't believe, realistically, you can look at that $10.10, which, uh, which President Obama did for federal contractors. I mean, listening to what Peter is saying, and of course, the Democrats very much want the issue because it's one of the few issues breaking their, the, their way. It takes away the specter, the onus, the problem of Obamacare and gets back to something that perennially, even in, uh, in our takeover of the Congress back in early 1995, following the 94 elections, even when we were riding high with approval numbers for Congress in the 70 percentile, raising the minimum wage always got a majority of respondents in any poll. So you do have this notion that somehow, well, gee, all things being equal, uh, pay people more money. And so there's this kind of generous impulse that ignores the reality of business. A major corporation like Walmart, no problem. Wally's Body Shop down the street, with only right. a few workers sure. and, and maybe a young guy uh, from high school who's been taking automotive class and industrial training, that young guy, that position goes away if there's a radical increase in, in the minimum wage. So I right. look for some change, and, 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 and I, I think it'll be interesting to see if it comes in the House or if it's up to Harry Reid with that huge population of unskilled labor in Las Vegas and its environs to put the brakes on from that huge increase. Yeah. Peter, not only, not only uh, I believe is what J.D. is saying correct, I mean, you know, some businesses could afford it and smaller ones can't, but also, to me, it should be a state-by-state -state issue. There shouldn't be a federal minimum wage because, you know, what's affordable to, uh, to one state or livable in one state is not livable in another. I mean, I, I just don't see the nationalizing the minimum wage, which, of course, has already been done, but I, I don't favor that. Well, I mean, there is some merit to just doing it state-by-state. -state. I mean, that argument has been made. Uh, I would point out that $10.10 an hour is high enough to even be troublesome for large corporations. For example, McDonald's would have to substantially automate to accommodate a 40%. We're talking about a 40% increase in, in the minimum wage at $10.10. And that becomes problematic uh, no matter who you are, unless you're the federal government, because you can take the money from people without any accountability and give it to someone else. Uh, but if you're running McDonald's, for example, you're going to have to automate the process of taking orders. Those places will will become some of their restaurants just won't be viable at ten dollars and ten cents an but, hour. But guys, all Obama has to do is say uh, make a new law, like he did with Obamacare. You can't cut your the, your your payroll uh, in order to get under the Obamacare limit, and you have to swear to the IRS under threat of penalty of perjury that you're not laying people off for that. Just make businesses uh, swear they're not laying off people to, uh, you know, to save money uh, because of the minimum wage increase. It, uh, he has a pen, baby. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 that's just him playing politics. And, and for Pete's sakes, this is what happens when you uh, make a neophyte president of the United States. He's, he's never earned an honest nickel in the private sector. He's a, for heck, he's a college professor. You expect your responsibility <laughs> well, from guys we, like we, that. We, we JD, love seeing final you, word, Peter. Final he, word. We got here's the seconds. thing. The power play will be this, that $10.10, they're going to find a way legislatively to put that in formulaically for collective bargaining for the unions as a sop to the unions, both public and private. Watch for that in terms of the minimum wage for big labor. All right, gentlemen, hey, a pleasure to speak to both of you. J.D., we'll see you tomorrow on America's Forum from noon to 3 right here on Newsmax Television, Eastern Time. And, Peter, we'll see you in a couple of hours back on the panel. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you soon. All right. Uh, there you go, J.D. Hayworth, ladies and gentlemen, and Peter Morisi. When we come back, Nicole Wallace of Morning Joe fame and former Bush spokesman right here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Breaking news.